Hi there, Scott with Seaman Custom Builds. Welcome to this video where I'll walk you through how to set up and configure T2 Laser Engraver to control your laser engraving machine. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing we need to do is download the software. So pulling up your favorite web browser, we'll go to t2laser.wordpress.com. There'll be a link to this below. And we're gonna go to download, and we will download from one of these partner sites. Once you have it downloaded, then you'll need to install. All right, so, so once you have the software installed, we will launch T2 Laser. If you bought the paid version, you'll be prompted to enter that, or you can use the trial version, which I suggest up to 30 minutes prior to purchase it gives you a good chance to try it out before you spend the money. Now let's make sure we can connect to our laser engraver. For this, I am using Universal Engraver's 15 watt version, but it works just the same for their three watt version and should work just the same for any other laser or CNC machine that uh, uses Gribble or GRBL as its language to speak from the program to the laser or CNC controller. So first step, we will go to control laser and we need to connect. So if you've connected before, the COM port will be here. If it's empty, click the lightning connect and down here we'll see it says connected COM3 at that 115 200 baud. We're using Gribble 1.1e and it says we're ready. For your first time to connect, you will need to upload the correct firmware. So we're going to go down here to upload firmware. It says 1.1e is default and we want to click that. You will get a pop that says your current firmware will be overridden. Yes. We'll watch the screen run here. You can see it's writing the code, gives you a percentage. This won't take very long at all. And we're back. So again, this disconnected us after the upgrade. So now you should see your COM port. This will vary. I know if I plug into the left or right side of my machine, it changes from three to four. So don't be alarmed. Hit connect again. Again, we see connected, and you should now see the correct code if you had not connected before. So now that we're connected, we want to test the functionality. So we want to hit right, make sure it goes right, left, make sure it goes left, up, and down. If you find any of these are backwards, just based on the direction you have your engraver sitting to the way you're facing it, you can come up here to settings, and you can reverse the X axis or the Y. So for mine, I have the Y reversed. That way it is working the way that I am facing it. So if direction is good, now we're gonna try the laser on, verify it's on, and laser off, make sure it turns off. At this point, if your settings are correct, you are ready to rock and roll. So let's hit our uh, X to get out of it and go back to our main screen. At this point, we can pick a file. We can create a file to put it in. I like to create all my files elsewhere and then just import them. And here we'll go to open image. You can see in my file folder, I have some images here. So we'll pick my icon. The next step is to pick our settings. So I always like to start with output size here. Remember we're talking 25 millimeters is similar to an inch. So here we're close to an inch. So let's make this 25 and tab. 
it's going to, because aspect lock is on, it's going to keep that dimension and OK. The next setting I like to go to is resolution. So 0.1 is the 0 0.1 is default. I stay at that for very small images. As it gets larger, I will change this to 0.15 or even 0.2. I find that you still get a good enough quality as the image gets larger. So we'll hit OK. Laser power, I always leave max at 255. I make all my adjustments based on speed and leave the laser power alone. So 0 and 255 we're good with. And then speed, this is what's going to change whether you have the 3 watt or 15 watt. It will vary on the material. I find that stuff like plywood, I have to go very slow at maybe 500 to 750. Um, Maple at about 1500 to 2000, but then cherry and walnut and some others, pine or cedar, I can run at 3000. So let's just make this 2000. Then the next thing is our rapid feed rate. I keep this around 3500. This is just the speed that it's going to move when it's not engraving back and forth, and we hit OK. Once we've set that, we are ready. If we're happy with all our settings, you can change whether it's horizontal or diagonal. I have found in almost every case, horizontal is faster than diagonal engraving. One more setting we'll want to change before we start the engraving is go up to settings and choose center start point absolute. By setting this, that means the laser will start at the absolute center of your image whether it's round, square, rectangular, whatever. I find this is very easy to mark your piece you're engraving. Mark the center where you want it. Adjust your dimensions and then go from there. Next we will hit control laser. It will generate the g-code and then we're ready to connect. The next step is to focus our engraver once we load our workpiece. So I've loaded my workpiece. I use a little metallic business card. You can use a piece of foil. We're going to turn the laser on. Make sure you have your glasses on. We'll see our laser. At this point we need to focus. So on the 15 watt there's a knob on the top. On the 3 watt you would just focus down here at the bottom of the laser. And we're looking for as tiny of a pinpoint we get before it starts going the other way. When we're happy we'll turn it off. We will remove our piece of foil. Since mine's in an enclosure I will shut the enclosure. And then if we're ready to run, because we've already checked our directional, you can see we're at zero, zero. If we needed to move our laser, you can manually move it by hand if we've got a long ways to go. If not, we can jog it to where we want it to go. Then we right click on the home and that re-zeroes out. So now this is our absolute center and that is where we're going to start. We can double check our settings here. We're at 25.1 and 24.9 for our size. Laser is, max is 255. Here's our feed rate at 2000 and our resolution at 0.1. If we're ready to go, we hit send G code and we will watch the laser start doing its thing. I also find time to time you may want to go back over your engraving, so let it finish. Then you can come back and hit the envelope again, let it run a second one. At this point your engravings will start getting deeper. Or the other option would go, go back, change the speed to lower, 
You can also change it real time if you want to speed it up, slow it down here as well. I typically do not change this in the middle of an engraving because you'll have a variation in your final image. There's a handy countdown bar here, a percentage and time left. And there we go. Out of this, we can so go once back you're done your engraving, and work on our next one exit or just out. close it out altogether. I hope you found this video helpful. And check out my next video on advanced settings and features and setting up the grid for the wasteboard. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for new video notifications, like, comment, and share.